one of the most uh, fascinating age segment in everybody's life is 10 to 15 years. Typically, a child is studying in class ranging from five to nine or something. Lots of stuff has been written about children in the age group of one to eight. They're toddlers, they're in the formative years of growth, and the child psychologists and some of the doctors also have spoken a lot of things about this particular age group. But somehow, the age group 10 to 15, which actually qualifies to be an age of adolescence, seems to be getting not the adequate attention it deserves. Adolescence is a word which has its origin in a Latin phrase called adolescia, which really means to grow up, to grow up. In fact, interestingly, this is an age where, which marks the transition from the childhood to adulthood. And this journey of five to six years, during which a child deserves to be called a teen, a teenager, in fact, is extremely eventful. If one takes a, a closer look at the growth, a trajectory of a child during these years, when we notice is that whether it's a boy or a girl, they undergo major transformation in three different dimensions, typically. One, of course, in physiological, physiological context, there are huge changes that are happening. The, the glandular, the secretion of hormones, and a voice, particularly, the voice starts cracking. Uh, they start getting hair all over the beautiful, tender skin that they have. And they also experience uh, some kind of sexuality in a very subtle and a soft manner. The girls also undergo, they cross the age of puberty. And sometimes the experiences they go through is also nothing short of traumatic. Now, that's a physiological context. I think far more important changes are happening on the psychological front. The child is growing and has reached an age of adolescence. So he's neither too young to be looked after very carefully, nor is he too grown up to be treated as an adult. So he lies somewhere in between. And that's a bit of a crisis that uh, is, is faced by the child during that particular age. But it's extremely important for us to understand that at that point of time, his cognitive faculties, his neural path, his, his cerebral uh, ecosystem is undergoing a beautiful kind of a transition. His analytical power, his power of reasoning is now started growing. Earlier on, when he was a child, he was only being told and he never questioned. At this age, when he's told, he questions because he starts thinking in terms of a lot of uh, issues that he faces personally in his own life and he starts analyzing. It doesn't take everything lying down typically as it were. I think this is a, what, this is a particular factor which really has to be observed very closely by the teachers, by the parents, by everybody who's connected with the child. Because this is where very imaginatively we can start infusing the concept of the so-called 4C, the critical thinking, the creativity, the collaboration, the communication, the concept clarity. You know, his, his, his cognitive faculties are relatively uncontaminated by external factors. He's got a very clear head. But he's got questions. And if we're able to handle those curiosities, those, uh, those tendencies to question everything, then I think that person can develop into extremely logical and extremely intelligent. Intellectually, the person can become very strong. And also during this period, if we can generate some kind of a situation, simulate a situation, or create a situation where the child is exposed to some of the very, very empathetic syndromes, concerns for others, value systems, emotional connect with others, then I think that also would probably 
contribute to making a person a complete. Child, at that particular age, you also have to remember, and parents of these age group, adolescents would testify to the fact that children uh, become a bit of a rebel at this stage. Like I mentioned earlier, they're not, they don't take everything lying down. But that rebel in them has to be tamed, has to be guided. They develop a sense of discrimination which tells them what is right, what is wrong. But what they don't understand is the consequences of action, whether it's right or wrong. They're able to distinguish, they're able to tell truth from untruth, from uh, being nice to being bad. But they're not fully sensitized to the consequences of action in these two categories. So if we are able to guide our children in this age, our adolescents, and I think the burden lies squarely on the shoulders of teachers and parents because they spend a lot of time uh, in the company of the teachers and the school system. The third extremely important factor, I think, which is of equally uh, which is equally critical, is that this age can also be extremely dangerous. It's a very impressionable age. They uh, get influenced by lot many thoughts and lot many experiences that they go through in this or they observe in other people. This age is, is dangerous in the context that you suddenly start experiencing certain certain issues which probably give you a bit of a bit of enjoyment, bit of a pleasure, bit of a kick. And a false sense of identity. You want to prove yourself. So you good chances the children start taking to drinking, to smoking, to drugs, and bit of a unwanted sexual escapades also sometimes. So I think the parents really need to watch that. And I think adolescence is the age where grown-up children need desperately the company and the guidance of the parents. The girls, the companies of the mother, and boys in the company of the father. And of course, a collection of love and bonding from both the parents. We need to uh, create this generation of adolescents who very soon will join the mainstream of active social life. And if they are intellectually and emotionally grounded, and if they have strong value system, I think there'll be tremendous contribution to the overall welfare and, and well-being of the society. Thank you.